He says that it's by the faith and religion of Christ, not by the old law. That's he's saying the same thing here. That streams out from the context. And so he's not saying that it, it doesn't involve any human works or any human deeds. So that that's abundantly obvious. And that's the difference, that the passages you bring up, because they're not teaching what you're saying, have a very reasonable answer. And the answer I just gave it, people, if they're being honest, you can see that it makes sense because it's right in the context there. But the passages that I'm citing, there's no answer for them because they're directly teaching that men can lose their salvation, that sins are involved with salvation. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. Okay? That people can believe and fall away. And so it's just to be dishonest not to accept it. But um, we could continue some more, or if you want to make a closing statement, or yeah, I was going to say because there, you know, we could go yeah. back and forth, you know, all night and everything. It's been two hours; it's been great. But um, the uh, <laughs> no, we perhaps should wrap it up. Um, there are other issues, I think, where it's uh, like I said, the position on this one. I don't think it's, it's crazy at all. I think it's uh, I don't believe it, but I can understand uh, pretty much why someone would and everything. Uh, but there are other issues I think that are more clearly uh, out out of touch with, with uh, Scripture and, you know, like the, the one two church, the soul of Scripture and everything. I'd like to get into those sometime. Um, but, yeah, in, in summary, I'd just like to say that there are so many statements in Scripture that uh, appear to offer believers assurance, saying that they have, been, they have been sealed, they have been called, they are not in darkness, they're children of the light and of the day, and that First Thessalonians 5, God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. It seems to be a pretty comforting scripture. And uh, it says to comfort yourselves with these words. And um, there are a lot of them. It says, uh, you know, we're sealed, we're called, that uh, we are seated with him. Uh, we will uh, judge the world. We will judge angels, in fact, which is interesting because of the comparison between saints and angels that you've raised at other topics. Um, that uh, we have not attained, I think, the progressive justification uh, in Philippians 3. I think he's talking about that, where he says, I, I, don't, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things are, which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press forward and so forth. Uh, but nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. I believe he's talking about uh, the, the extent of justification. We have not attained it isn't that I don't think he's talking about salvation. It's we haven't attained uh, perfection, nor will we in the, in the flesh. But we press forward towards the mark that when we see him, of course, we will be like him, uh, for we shall see him as he is. Uh, and he's oh, they're always talking about them, the things, the, the the wrath that comes upon the children of disobedience. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. Uh, but our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. I think uh, for the hope, uh, he talks about in Colossians 1, the hope that is laid up for you in heaven and exhorts everybody to walk worthy of the Lord, not that you're going to lose your salvation, but to be pleasing to him in all things. And again, this is an issue we can go around forever about. And uh, anyway, we know where each of us stands on that, and uh, there are other issues that are easier to get to the heart of, I think. But anyway, uh, we should probably, it's been two hours, it's been great, and I, I thank you so much for making the time. And um, Yeah, do you mind if I, if, oh, if I just, with like two or three I minutes? Do, I do hope we can do it again soon. Of course, wrap up, obviously, take all the time you want. Okay. Um, that I would just say that uh, there are clearly many passages we've covered, and there is no explanation that anyone can give for the clear indications that people can be wa washed and then returned to the mud. Second Peter 2, St. Paul clearly indicates in 1 Corinthians 9.27 he'd be among the reprobate. Ephesians 5, we clearly have those who are light in the Lord, the justified believers, can be partakers with the mortal sinners and excluded from salvation. 1 Corinthians 6.9, indicating that certain sins exclude a person from salvation. We have the parables of Jesus you know, that those who do things with the talents he's received uh, will be saved. Those who do not do them will not be saved. Um, then we have other clear indications that he will render every man according to his works. Matthew sixteen twenty seven. 27. Um, he shall cast into hell those who do iniquity, not just on the basis of whether you have believed 
2 Corinthians 5, 9-10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So salvation is based on what a person has done. Um, if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. Uh, we have John eight fifty one. If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Not just believe. Matthew six fourteen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. It's only if he forgives. Okay, it's not by faith alone. Uh, then we have, and just uh, I'll, real quick, I'll be done soon. Luke twelve thirty eight to forty three. Blessed is that servant. Um, whom his Lord shall find so doing. And he goes on in Luke 21, he says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. Okay, and take heed that drunkenness and the cares of this life don't under overtake you. So obviously it's whether you do these things that you will be saved. And so there are other passages we could discuss, but every passage that the other side brings up is, is easily answered. It's either referring to the old law um, or something in that context, or another um, topic that is not dealing with what they think it is. And that's why there's a reasonable explanation for them, but there are no explanations for all of these clear indications in Scripture. So um, I guess that wraps it up, and we might be able to have another discussion on another topic, you know? Yeah, sure, sure. So um, I, I was just going to stop. Do you, do you mind if I just stop the recording now? Um, uh, well, I was gonna. Well, I'll, I don't know. I don't know if I'll make videos. That is because it'd be so many. Um, I just want to say one thing that, yeah, I do hope for the listeners. I, I do hope there are other uh, t- discussions that will follow because proving uh, this point, if if the Catholic position on this point were proven to be true, that doesn't prove the Catholic. And to be what the Catholic Church claims to be, it would have to be right about everything, 100 percent right about everything, which uh, I think will be demonstrated more clearly in the future that. Uh, that isn't uh, the case, and that's what we'll get to at another time. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I don't agree, but, uh, yeah, that's, um, yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't be here if you did. <laughs> right. So, um, okay, is, it, is there anything else, or I was just going to stop no, no, it? No, no, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to stop the recording.